Good afternoon everybody, it is Saturday, November 21st, 2020, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, temperature 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit, and we are in Brompton Park Cemetery, um, one of the so-called Magnificent Seven of the London cemeteries. Uh, this is not my favourite one. Um, I'm personally a fan of Nunhead Cemetery in South London and Highgate Cemetery, uh, which uh, Highgate being perhaps the most famous of the seven. But um, what I thought I'd show you today is just some of the uh, stunning sculpture work on these sort of Victorian tombs, uh, the sort of, particularly the statuary, the um, uh, angels, etc. And I'll show you something just there. Uh, Flight Sub Lieutenant Reginald Alexander John Crawford, born 1891, died June. 1915, so that was uh, obviously a casualty of the First World War and pretty splendid tomb or grave he has there. You can see there's a this sort of early fighter plane and then looks like a zeppelin. Uh, so that is um, pretty special. So. Yeah, I mean, you can see that the crosses and the different uh, stonework, each one's unique. So let's, uh, let's just have a look and see what we can see. So, um, I think under the auspice of the Royal Park system, so Although it's a cemetery, it's, uh, I think, um, run by the, the London Royal Parks. It's a pretty decent sized tomb there. Um, the family mausoleum of, looks like, Henry Francis. And this is rather special, just there. Uh, looks like... Uh, something out of Doctor Who or something. Um, but yeah, this uh, cemetery is slightly different to the other six in that um, it's pretty open plan, really. I mean, it doesn't have the, um, the sort of classic overgrown Gothic uh, nature, nature that you see with the others. Uh, show you detail there. Uh, give you some historical background. That's the architect Benjamin Bold, who was uh, chosen to design, a, design the cemetery here in 1838. And uh, there's a close look at him. So we'll uh, we'll just have a scoot around and. See if I can find you some interesting details. I mean, there's there's hundreds or several thousand of these these mausoleums, and they're all pretty interesting. And let's show you that. Um, yeah, I was just about to say that. Um, I mean, Highgate Cemetery is uh, your classic sort of Gothic. Um, overgrown type place and obviously that's uh, been a feature in a few horror films they've used uh, Highgate and uh, same with Nunhead Cemetery in um, South London which I will feature in a future video because that's one of my favorites um, so 
expect something on Nunhead Cemetery pretty soon. Uh, so basically you've got where we are today, which is Brompton, uh, Brompton Cemetery. Um, as I mentioned, Highgate Cemetery, Nunhead, and also there's um, Abney Park Cemetery in Stoke Newington. Um, that's pretty similar to Highgate. So you could say that's a, it's a mini Highgate. Um, and West Norwood Cemetery in South London. And also there's one in East London, which I always forget the name of. Um, uh, yeah, I can't think of that at the moment, but um, in uh, West London, just further west from here, you've got uh, Kensal Rye Cemetery. So um, they're the, the Magnificent Seven and they were all built in London during the 1840s and 1850s, basically because in the, the city of London, uh, they just ran out of space for all the bodies. So uh, they needed new space. And um, these, uh, these great places were, were created for that need. Uh, so I'm going to just sort of go in and out of these different paths and see if I can pause on anything. Uh, particularly interesting. Of course, these days, uh, many people are cremated, so they, there isn't the pressure for space. Um, although when I came in here at the entrance, I did notice there was some freshly dug graves, so uh, there's still people choosing or um, wishing to uh, to uh, go that way um, or, or perhaps their families wish to let's have a look uh, down here yeah so this is certainly different in field to the other the other of the magnificent seven um, in fact I read something that the planner uh, had sort of tried to design the, the place in a shape of a sort of church or cathedral with these, which I'll show you later, sort of wide open um, walkways. Yeah, just uh, find these super interesting for the historical um, aspect. I mean, I mentioned I mentioned it on every video that I'm heavily into the the sort of 19th century, uh, not specifically the, the Gothic at all, but uh, just the uh, the architectural heritage, the industrial heritage. Um, and I think these these kind of cemeteries uh, just show you so much history, um, you know. And it's the it's the real thing. Um, it's not some sort of Disneyland creation of some sort of Gothic Victoriana. This is the the real thing. So uh, any tourists coming to London and wanting to to get into that uh that sort of victoriana uh, edwardian sort of gothic 19th century uh feel i would suggest that um you know rather than uh visiting sort of london dungeon or um you know some something in of that kind i would say just spend some time in the the, the magnificent seven cemeteries and you'll you'll soak up uh, plenty of plenty of the gothic atmosphere yeah, 
see if I can find some some ivy covered angels. Uh, there's plenty of them here, so let's see if we can find something like that. Always uh, approach these places uh, with a um, attitude of uh, respect and and peace. Uh, certainly, don't wish to offend any any energies, any spirits that might be here. So, I come here, uh, hopefully, um, with respect and uh, and peace as my. Um, it's my energy, so uh, just wishing to admire the, the historic stonework, the um, you know the craftsmanship that's gone into producing these these gravestones. I mean, personally, on a, a spiritual note, uh, to me, it's um, it's absolutely unnecessary uh, in terms of needing to be done uh, to to honor the individual my own view is that um, this sort of heavy physicality is uh, is not really what it uh, should be about so for me um, it's just a purely a matter of of archaeology of history um, and uh, of this, this 19th century period. I have noticed on a couple of more recent visits to Highgate that they have cleared up a lot of um, sort of stones that were overturned or um, that have become cracked due to uh, water or um, pressure from tree roots, etc. And uh, it has to be done, but um, you know, every time a section is cleared up, it, it does take away some of the atmosphere I think. Where I am, the this West, this uh, uh, Brompton Cemetery is in the Fulham, sort of Fulham Chelsea area, stroke Earl's Court. Um, so it's just sort of west of central London. I'd like to tell you some details of the different types of uh, stonework you have here, what um, the different crosses might mean, the different uh, uh, slabs and designs, but I, I'm just not um, uh, proficient enough to sort of go into those kind of details. Um, if you want a, a, a decent reference book on English churches. I highly recommend uh, Simon Jenkins's 1000 Best English Churches. Um, it's just uh, such, um, such a good read. Um, I mean you can open it up, read a couple of pages. Um, yeah he's, he's just a very uh, likeable and easy uh, he's got yeah he just has a likable easy style to his writing so i recommend 
uh, Simon Jenkins' A Thousand English Churches. Um, he has also done one on houses. There's, um, there's another book, Thousand English Houses. But um, it, it's not quite interesting, uh, as interesting as the church one. Um, that just seems to be particularly good as far as I'm concerned. And he rates uh, the different churches on a sort of star system out of five. So for something um, immaculately preserved with, with rare or nationally significant uh, um, aspects to it, he'll, he'll give that five stars. So um, yeah, do, do check that out if you come across it. And I managed to get hold of, uh, he's got another one out, which is, um, I think, I mean, I think it's him. It's um, in the same um, publishing series as the others on uh, railway stations, uh, English railway stations. So that's, um, that's pretty good. Haven't really uh, had time to to read up too much on that but um, that's certainly in my, in my you know future reading plans so uh, let us maybe go uh, let's go down here um, yeah in that last um, shot you might have seen a, a more modern structure which was the which which is uh, Stamford Bridge football ground, which of course is the home of Chelsea. Um, unfortunately, there's uh, there's not much happening these days. There's no crowd attendance um, because of the uh, restrictions on groups gathering. So um, <clears throat> I'm not really following football at the moment. So I've got no idea quite what's going on but I, I, I believe it's just um, sort of video screens or I, don't, I just don't know um, but certainly on a on a Saturday afternoon uh, if Chelsea were having a home home match um, you know you'd be able to hear the the sort of cheers and uh, what not f uh, from here I mean you, you'd hear it um, pretty loud from where I'm standing now uh, let's go down here and in fact I have been down this path so we'll go up here and there's a nice shot there look at that of that Yes, yeah, so if you can imagine um, in the design of this, it is like a sort of large cathedral and you've got the, the different elements and as we come out of this arch, you'll see it open up. And then I'll do a zoom in on the dome over there. Pretty nice, and there's uh, plenty of uh, black crows. So that's always a, a nice gothic touch on top of a top of something. So if uh, if I can get one of those, I'll do that. Um, yeah, to show you something else in the far distance there. That building goes by the curious name as the Empress State Building. Um, it's a uh, well, extremely average tower to uh, to my way of thinking, but it does have um, quite an impressive name. Uh, so let's see if I can show you a little bit more.
Yeah, it's a good time to film some So it's 20 past 3 Still good light around but it'll be, uh, be dark in a, about an hour or less uh, Let's go up here Yeah, so I'll, I'll call this part one of my cemetery series and you can expect um, Highgate, Abney Park, Kensal Rise, Nunhead, West Norwood and the one in the east that I can never remember the name um, but I will feature a video on each of those. So I'm looking to get a, a nice shot of a, a black crow on top of one of these um, statues. Nice uh, tree there. The uh, uh, ubiquitous uh, cedar of Lebanon. This part of London is under the direct uh, flight path of planes coming into Heathrow. So uh, residents here will hear the noise of that those planes um, pretty much all the time. It's a nice little bit. It's an interesting triple cross thing. I'm not too sure about here, but at, at Abney Park Cemetery, it's designated as a nature reserve. And I have seen uh, plenty of um, rats there, foxes, uh, rabbits, squirrels. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really great for, for that. In London there are older cemeteries than the Magnificent Seven which as I said date from the 1840s to 1850s. There are uh, of course uh, 17th century and um, yeah so I suppose the sort of earliest stones still, still around would probably be um, sort of mid late 17th century now. But, uh, yeah, I'm just sort of giving you a total sort of tour of the, uh, the place. 
place. I think this place is great if you have a bike because it's so flat and you've got these wide avenues. Um, so uh, pl plenty of bikers come through here. To show you some of the work on those, it's pretty nice. And there's quite a nice one here. Just check this um, sort of northern side of the cemetery, see if I can find you something a bit different. Uh, the, the angel statue is probably my favorite, but there, there are other things. Um, let's see if we can find something. This, um, again, I don't know the, the name for it, but this, this sort of roll, roll type style is, is uh, quite evident here, it's pretty nice. Um, and a sort of Victoria cross shaped uh, cross there. Um, and this individual, Charles Rennie, uh, apparently um, was lost uh, off his yacht in 1910. It says underneath, not interred here, so obviously there wasn't a body to uh, be recovered in that, in that case. Uh, nice... Um, slightly off-center stone there. I mean some people find these places eerie or spooky but for me they're just um, very peaceful. Um, the birds seem to have no problem with it. Uh, plenty of bird life and as I said other animal life. Um, would not uh, personally wander around here after dark, but um, I'm sure uh, there's no real harm in that. 
Um, it's quite nice. And a uh, sort of more Celtic early cross look to that one. This is quite unusual. Um, can't tell you anything about it, but it's uh, a bit special. And then the back of that. And this says, here lies Frederick Richardsley and sometime of Walton Hall, Liverpool. I mean, the people with the money to, uh, to be able to afford to be buried here or to bury their, their family were quite often industrialists, tycoons, uh, men who had made their money during the Industrial Revolution. Um, so then as now that's um that's your demographic of um a typical uh sort of expensive grave i mean for me personally i'm just happy to have if there are any ashes just uh scattered wherever um, i think it's it's uh, important to remember people either as um, as a memory or, or perhaps a, a photograph. I think is is good, but um, having the the physical bones uh, somewhere to me is um, is not uh, not necessary. So where shall I take you now? Um, yeah, there's a, a larger looking, collection of larger looking mausolea up here. Let's have a look. Here. God's finger touched him and he slept. I don't think I've showed you this one. It's um, it's large, not particularly uh, intricate in any way, um, but uh, it's uh, home to someone. And there's quite a tall okay. one up there. So as you may be able to hear from 
there's a Tanoi speaker announcement saying that the cemetery is shortly to close. Um, so, uh, going to end the, the video pretty soon. Um, I was looking for a, an example of a stone lion in almost every cemetery. Um, there's a sort of impressive stone lion, but uh, I thought there was there was one somewhere in this part, but I think I might have missed it. Um, but, uh, perhaps we'll we'll see one. I mean, there's definitely. Uh, two I know of, one in Highgate and one in Avenue Park, so uh, we'll catch up on the, on the stone lines at a future date. Also here in Brompton Cemetery, I think there's a notable number of, uh, of planted trees, uh, particularly um, sort of Mediterranean type species, sort of olive trees, uh, etc. Um, uh, certainly when I've been here in the summer, it does have a sort of, um, yeah, Mediterranean or sort of Californian feel to it. Nice uh, doggy there. Hello. And there's a... Uh, um, one you see fairly common, which is a sort of urn with a shroud over it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you the, the significance, but there will yes, be one. our stone line you can see see that and there he is looking extremely good today zoom you up Okay, so on that note, thank you very much for watching. I'm Kent Davidson and I'll be bringing you six videos of the other six cemeteries in, of the London Magnificent Seven. So thanks again and bye for now.